This is one of the most prominent and significant illegal wildlife trade areas in the world. This is the Greater Mekong, where traffic surveys have found thousands of wildlife parts for sale. The Greater Mekong is a unique sub-region bound together by the Mekong River, covering Cambodia, Lao People's Democratic Republic, Myanmar, Thailand, Vietnam, and People's Republic of China, specifically Yunnan Province and Quang Si Chuang Autonomous Region. The countries come together to foster cooperation for economic growth and poverty reduction. New economic zones were developed to improve trade and transport, investment and tourism. Today, people and goods can move more quickly, cheaply and easily. With growing economies, rising affluence and disposable income, the area has become a prominent destination for illegal wildlife products in markets and shops throughout the region. International trade in many of the wildlife species concerned contravenes CITES, the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora, to which all countries of the Greater Mekong are signatories. This convention accords varying degrees of trade regulation to more than 37,000 species of animals and plants around the world to ensure it does not threaten their survival. CITES governs the international trade in wildlife, their parts, products and derivatives that are used for any purpose, including pets, food, medicines, curios and leather goods. Elephant ivory is perhaps among the most popular, widely and easily available. Many will buy them for home decor, gifts or jewellery. They're considered status symbols. Much of the ivory being sold in the Greater Mekong area is smuggled from Africa, where elephants are being poached at alarming rates. 15,000 or more African elephants are estimated to be killed a year to feed the demand for ivory. Illegal ivory can be found for sale throughout the region, including in most markets in the Golden Triangle, where Lao, Myanmar and Thailand meet. These booming border towns are notorious as a global hub for drug production but are also ground zero for illegal wildlife trade. Here, almost every part of the elephant has been found for sale. The creation of special economic zones in the Golden Triangle and elsewhere in the Greater Mekong has brought a tremendous amount of construction and new businesses. Casinos have mushroomed in places like Cambodia and Laos in an attempt to cash in on gambling, an activity that is banned in China. After China clamped down on ivory trade activities within its borders, these economic zones have also flourished as ivory and other wildlife trade hotspots. Wildlife in the Greater Mekong is also under threat from persistent demand for use in traditional medicines. Traditional medicine dates back to at least the 3rd century BC and uses parts and derivatives from more than 1,000 plant and animal species, some of which are endangered now, including tigers, bears, pangolins, rhinoceros, sarraus, and reptiles. Between 2000 and 2019, it is estimated that a million pangolins were trafficked globally, although the true figure could be far higher in demand largely for their scales, which are ground up into powder. Bear medication is easily found here too. Bears are largely captured from the wild or are captive bred so that traders can extract bile from their gallbladders for use in traditional medicine. Like bears, captive tiger facilities also exist here. Some facilities have been implicated in the black market supply of numerous tiger parts used for medicinal and decorative purposes. 
Wild tigers in Southeast Asia have also been decimated due to poaching for the wildlife trade. The single greatest threat African rhinos face is poaching for their horns, with China and Vietnam as top consumers. From 2016 to 2017 alone, over 4,500 African horns entered illegal trade globally. The market for rhino products is driven by rich customers who have a need to show off social status, who want to flaunt their wealth. Many medicinal items are sold in violation of laws or without adequate regulatory systems in place. The demand for wildlife products is tied closely to culture and tradition, with many believed to increase virility, status, health and luck. There is little scientific evidence that suggests these treatments are effective. Wildlife is also taken for the pet trade. This demand for rare and exotic pets has exploded in recent years and fuels the collection and smuggling from renowned biodiversity hotspots around the world. For many people, wildlife is an important source of protein. In many parts of the region, meat from wildlife species such as deer, civet and other small mammals are eaten daily. In other cases, species such as bears, pangolins and tigers are sought after as delicacies. This trade also raises health concerns for the Greater Mekong and worldwide, as emerging infectious diseases are being linked to wildlife trade. Efforts are being taken to ensure wildlife trade is brought under control. Engagement and outreach with the public and authorities are carried out. Cross-border training and collaborations are being held. Some laws have been strengthened. Investigations, seizures and arrests have been conducted. While seizures temporarily starve the supply to the marketplace, there is much more to do to turn the tide to end illegal trade. Effective enforcement is needed, backed by solid investigations from source to market that lead to strong conviction outcomes. Rules and regulations need to be improved. Law enforcement officers need resources, skills and tools. Targeted behaviour change messaging needs to be directed to critical segments of consumers. These should be complemented with an effort to reduce demand, targeted at those who live in the Greater Mekong and those who visit. Consumers play a crucial role and must be made more aware of the risks in buying prohibited wildlife products. Buyers must be aware as illegal purchases could lead to their arrests and prosecution. The public can report suspected illegal wildlife trade to local authorities. Illegal, unregulated and unsustainable trade is driving wild populations of hundreds of species into endangerment, not only in the Greater Mekong, but around the world. We must work together to ensure that trade in wild animals and plants is not a threat to the conservation of nature. Together, we can end illegal wildlife trade in the Greater Mekong.